with Jimmy Brennan, head coach of Carlisle Villa ABC. Appreciate this, Jimmy. How are you doing? No, good on the air. Very good, mate. Well, as best, best we can with, with this lockdown palaver. Now, you've been very busy during this lockdown palaver. Uh, you must be the most busy coach for the online classes. Uh, very good. Have you enjoyed doing them? Well, yeah, I, I, I do training every day anyhow. So I thought, well, I might as well help out the kids and the, the parents of the kids by doing, um, you know, a, a, a session every day, Monday to Friday. Well, this morning, um, broken down, the session's broken down into three parts, okay? So the first part's about five minutes long, five exercises, one minute, all manageable exercises. We've been in various lockdowns since March, no competitive boxing since last March. How much have you missed the boxing club just running normally? Oh, it's, it's absolute torture for me. Yeah, that's all, that's all I do. So um, it is, it's very, very hard. It's been, been, been very hard missing, uh, you know, the activity with the kids and, and the you know, the, the interaction with the kids, that's, that's you know, the, the biggest thing. Now, we're hoping we've turned the corner. Vaccinations are going way up. When can you see competitive amateur boxing returning? I don't think we're going to get any competitive uh, boxing now until September. You know, if, if, we're, if we're back in in April, um, I, I hope I'm wrong. I, I hope it's before that, but I, I can't see this. I think it's just going to start again in September as normal. So the normal season starts uh, September. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, now, your head coach, Carlisle Villa, can you describe that club to me? Uh, the Villa, Villa in its name, in its current name, um, has been on the go since 1993. However, we we evolved from Christus Rex Boxing Club, which I boxed as a kid, and Christus Rex Amateur Boxing Club was formed in 1974. So being on the go as a club in Carlisle for a long time, yeah. It's a real community club, isn't it, Jimmy? Yeah, we do lots uh, lots of different sessions in the, in the community, not just the boxing. You know, we've got Keep Fit for uh, women-only classes, um, obviously men's classes as well, as well as the HIT classes on the morning, mental health initiatives. Uh, yeah, we, we do we do a fair bit, which is outside of the boxing remit, yeah. And it's for all ages. It's not for people who just want to box. It is, like you say, for fitness too. No, of course, yeah. Well, you can only do, you can only do so many sessions um, with the boxers. You know, which we train five times a week with the boxers. But the um, you know the the building itself is a fantastic facility. So yeah, we we, we use it as much as we can for the for the community. I'm always amazed how much time head coaches put into running clubs. It takes so much of your uh, personal life, doesn't it? Um, but I'm sure you've got other coaches there. I know Jimmy Andrews was there. Is he still there with you? And other yeah. coaches that help you out? Jimmy Andrews is there. Um, great assets. Uh, well, all the, all the coaches, you know, we've got Tony Dunn. He's uh, absolutely fantastic. Lad, he used to box for us when he was a... Uh, well, he started. He started late. He never. He never started till he was about twenty four, twenty five. He had a, a dozen bouts of so, and he's he's a really good, uh, really good coach. Excellent pad man. Uh, we've got young Gary Johnson. Um, he's one of our box current boxers. Be he coaches as well, and we've also got um, Brian Sanderson, uh, one of the older older lads. He's a current sec. He's a secretary at the moment, and he he was uh, coach when I was a kid, so he's still knocking about. Um, as well as John Byers. Yeah, we've, we've got probably half a dozen, seven quality coaches there who help out quite a lot, yeah. 
And how much does that support mean to you, Jimmy? I mean, it'd be virtually impossible, wouldn't it, to run it on your own? Oh, you can't. You can't. You know, it's it is impossible to run a run a club on your own. Yeah, you've got to have the the uh, the help of of, of others. Um, I'm I'm lucky. I'm in a, I'm in a great position. I've retired now, so it is. You know, that's that's all I do. Whereas these other coaches, they they do a day's work, come in straight. Some of them straight after work, still in the work clothes, and um, you know, are able to give an hour or two on, on an evening for the kids. Yeah, all free, of course. <laughs> And I know you boxed beforehand, but what do you love about the coaching side of the sport? I think it's when you when you get a kid from nothing, just walking off the street, and you know you then you then get him in a position to step through them ropes, and then hopefully you know he'll progress from them. Um, that's 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 the thing. The, the the big thing I get out of it is the progression of seeing the, seeing the boxers progress. You started at nine years old, didn't you? And um, was it this club that you started boxing at? No, it was the other club in Carlisle, uh, Curragh House. That's where I started when I was a kid with my two brothers. Um, and then, yeah, moved moved to as you, as you do, you know, you moved moved to, moved to the club across the town, and uh, and then from there, um, boxed until I was sixteen, and then I joined the army. Just under uh, just seven, just turned seventeen, yeah. Why did you start, Jimmy? Were, were your brothers already at the boxing? Uh, was it no, in the family the, anyway? The three of us joined together. Um, my old man um, who was keen on the boxing. Um, he just took us down to the club and thought we would uh, thought we would like it. And can you remember your first bout where that was and how that went? It was yeah yeah. I won it. So we got boxed a lad um, over the northeast, um, Shildon. Shildon British Rail, it used to be called. I think it's Shildon ABC now. Is that memory still clear? I think it is. I, I've maybe added a few things on it, maybe a few uh, <laughs> a few combinations. But yeah, I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I, as you say, I, I joined when I was nine. And, I, and I, in them days, you couldn't box until you were 11. So it was a long time waiting to get in. You know, I'd done a lot of sparring prior to uh, my first bout and a lot of training. So yeah, I was really looking forward to it. And I, yeah, I remember it. Now, like you said, well, you joined, joined the British Army and you carried on your boxing in the Army. And yeah. I always think this must be one of the most intense moments of boxing and representing like your regiments against the Navy, the RAF. Uh, what was it like? No, it's a great honour. You know, it's, when I was there in um, 88, it was very competitive. I think there was about 30 lads on the squad. It was a massive squad. And there's only 10 positions, you know, there's only 10 weights for the inter-services competition. So, you you, <clears throat> you, you, you know, you, you're training, you, you're under the watchful eye of, uh, it was Mickey Gannon at the time and his assistants. And, um, yeah, it's very, very, very intense, um, very intense squad to be in, yeah. What was your favourite bout, Jimmy, in the army? Does one stand out? I had a, the the navy navy lad there. Uh, I boxed there was the lad called Dina San, good good pal of mine now. He uh, he uh, helps run the boxing club in Sunderland. Um, I had two good bouts against him against the navy. Lost them both, but the two really competitive bouts. Um, the RDF lad that boxed uh, Gonzalez the first season and then the second season. I can't remember the lad's name, but I won both them. Um, but just just being around the you know. Not just the inter-services bouts, but the the bouts throughout the season. You know, you you, you represent the army, you know, on, on shows all um, all over the country. Really, you know, you, you and for the coach to select his team for the inter-services. So it, it's a very busy season. After the army, you came back to Carlisle and uh, you joined the boxing club again. Was it always your intention to go into the coaching side? Yeah, I, I remember vividly saying, you know, to the coach, the head coach at the time, uh, Colin Nixon, um, when, I, when I was on one of my leaves, and I think it was from the army boxing team, I said, yeah, I, I just bumped into him 
down the town and I said, listen, when I have to get out, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, become a coach. And was it Colin who had a big influence on your coaching style? Uh, a, a lot of the early coaches do affect boxers, don't they? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, it was a, it was a, my coach for a few, uh, a lot of years, uh, with Colin and obviously Mickey Gannon at the boxing, at the army boxing team. Uh, he uh, influenced us a lot as well. Very good coach, Mickey Gannon. And which, uh, I'm a bit tired this morning, I've just uh, got up watching Canelo in, in the early hours. Uh, which coaches, pro coaches and uh, pro boxers do you like to watch and listen to? To tell you the truth, I'm not really into the pro pro scene. Um, I, I don't really don't don't really follow it that much. Obviously, the, the big the big ones like Canelo, uh, Mayweather, and what have you. But I'm, I'm not. I, I don't really. I don't really follow it, and I'm a I'm a purist. I tell you too, and uh, amateurs my game, and I don't really tend to uh, follow it a lot. You know. Talking about the amateur boxing there, how much has it changed since you boxed? You feel it has. Unbelievable, isn't it? Um, you know, just the um, I think we what we, what we used to do two and a half and one two minute rounds and uh, and the headgear and well, you know, I, I, a lot of it's for the good, of course it is, but um, a lot of it as well. It's um, I don't know, it's just changing for the change sake. I think. I think one thing I've noticed: female boxing in the last ten years has gone through the roof, hasn't it? And it seems oh, yeah. it's growing and growing. Oh, massive female boxing is massive. We've got a couple of girls at our club, um, and Katie Taylor's obviously got a lot to do with that as well, um, and the exposure it gets, especially with Katie Taylor, you know, fighting for world titles. How do you think it could? I know we all complain about decisions and things. Like it's a personal perspective sometimes, isn't it? But how do you think the sport, the amateur sport, could improve? That's a good question, that, but. Um, I think we've got to we've got to, we've got to try and open it up a bit more so it's so it's easier to become affiliated. I think we we we're, we're losing a lot of kids to the unlicensed scene. I think we've got to try and make it a little bit easier on the clubs because it's, it's very expensive for for the clubs to um, to get kids carded. And I think something's got to be done along them lines. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Now I love a quote that's in your gym which is, uh, uh, if you train easy, winning is hard. And oh, if you train hard, winning is easy. I love that quote. You've got some nice quotes, haven't you, around the gym? Yeah, when well, we, got, we, got, we got a bit of money from the lottery um, a few years back. The, the, the facility itself was, was actually really run down. And, uh, you know, when, it's, when it rained, you were dodging buckets and what have you. But we, we, got a, we got a nice grant from the lottery and... Um, we um, yeah freshened the place up again, and, and I, I just it was actually the builder who, who suggested it. it was it was our current uh, current sponsor. He he said, "What about quotes along the walls?" And I says, "Oh yeah, definitely." And so I, you know I, I looked up a few and uh, inspirational quotes, and yeah, that's what we've got all plastered over the wall, and, and it does. I think it inspires the kids, you know, to um, to work that little bit harder. And Carlisle Villa ABC. If you were selling it now to a parent or even an older person who wants to come to fit, what would you say to them about your club? It's a it's a fantastic facility. Um, the sport itself, boxing, teaches kids respect. It'll give them confidence and it, it'll give them uh, a, a great foundation for their fitness. And and hopefully, you know, the, the, um, that'll go on to help them in their lives which I know it has myself and I know it has for a lot of a lot of uh, kids that I coach and have coached and and you know grew up with that boxing even though they never, never even competed it's helped them along the way definitely without a doubt and uh, I would uh, I would recommend it to any parent yeah and one thing I always try and get across if a parent was watching this or a child uh, the worry is when you don't know boxing that you'll be thrown straight in that ring as soon as you walk in, it's not like I've never been into a club yet where it's been like that. No, it's it's a long process, isn't it? You know, uh, especially we, we or me myself, I, I probably did um, try and throw kids a little bit a bit early, but not now. We, we've got to teach teach them the basics um, first before they get they get in them 
ropes, uh, get through them ropes uh, and put a pair of gloves on and, and uh, have someone throwing shots at them. Yeah, you've got to, you've got to teach them the basics. And what is it, Jimmy, that it is a tough, tough sport? What is it, competing and coaching, uh, what is it that you love about boxing? I think the thing I love about the boxing is it's one-on-one. -on -one. You know, it's you pitted against someone else. And now, um, you know, you're, you're, you're boxing someone, same age, same weight. And it's just pitting your wits against someone else. It's, um, I think it's a fantastic, um, a fantastic sport. Well, I appreciate your time, Jimmy. And uh, good luck uh, with the resurrection, I suppose, of uh, English boxing from now on. No, 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 no problems at all, Andy. Yeah, yeah. Sooner the better, mate. Eh? Sooner the better. Definitely. Thanks very much. All the best, mate. No problems at all.